Welcome, adventurers, to Roleslay with Roman. Popping in here as a quick reminder that we have Roll Slang t-shirts and postcards available at the shop, along with now a new Chapter 4 poster, which we will not show you until the end of the episode because it contains spoilers. Also, another reminder that you can listen to Roll Slang with Roman in podcast form. Okay, enjoy the episode. Previously on Roll Slang with Roman. Frog town, baby, that's where we're going. Give us the lily lot or he will suffer. That is absolutely fast, Timmy. What the heck is the lily lot? It is highly coveted property, which has made it a territorial crater for dispute with between some of the locals and the embassy. My name's Lily Patton. Do you know your lily lot is like at the center of a territorial dispute? <laughs> You're not part of that gang, are ya? My name is Crockett, the leader of the Laguna Ticks. And the rightful owner of the lily lot! Don't make me resort to violence, Papa! Papa? Papa? Crockett has a interest in me? There's a I, lot going I, on I don't right know now. what's happening. It seems a little ridiculous because they are a power hungry egomaniac. Uh -huh. and I'm a gardener. I grab him by the throat. And Crockett actually like passes out. If you go east, big fallen tree trunk, that's where your friend will be. Th thank you so much for your help. Timmy! T Timmy! I'm just glad everyone's safe. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. I am Tin Penny Samuel. Boy, so many revelations here. Tin Penny's got a freaking mansion. He's the godfather. He's got a family. You see Ten Penny Samuel exit the car. He looked like he needs some rest. And Ten Penny Samuel starts leading you back to his home. You step into this incredibly beautiful, comfortable, fly car. As you drive, you pass the bustling streets and the houses of like common Frogtown folk. You cross the last rickety wet bridge and pass the clearing of especially tall long grass. A frog McMansion slowly reveals <laughs> itself like a pop-up book springing to life. The massive home is held up on metal supports that rise up out of the marsh, so flooding won't be a worry. Ooh, I love that. You pull into this circular marble driveway with a mountain statue of a frogodite. A of what? Of, of like Aphrodite. <laughs> of Afro, Af Oh, Afrogdite. 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 Oh Word. my gosh. See, I love this because now I've learned that there is ancient frog Greek, Greek mythology. mythology. <laughs> it's freak mythology. It's freak mythology. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the car pulls to a stop and Ten Penny Samuel opens the door, steps out, and then you're standing in front of this incredibly magnificent mansion, but not like the spell. There's a D and D spell called the Magnificent. Oh, oh got it. That's okay. 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 No, to our D and D fans, they'll love it. Damn, this is big ass house. Huh? Big old house. Seconds later, the front door is actually opened by a frog butler. Welcome home, boss man. And you brought company too. That's fantastic. Zidi's taking care of some business, but she should be home by tonight. Welcome. What's your name, sir? Lots of big ole. Lots of big ole. Yeah. Oh. Lots of big ole. <laughs> like, are those two words, or is that one word? That's rude as hell, and I'm so sorry for him. Make a perception check, both of you. Uh, one. Fifteen. <laughs> Seventeen. Totally. Youngblood, you notice that his eyes keep darting behind him, <gasps> and there's like a thin sheen of sweat on his temples. If you lean in to listen, you can hear some rustling going in on what like might be the backyard. The butler seems really nice though. Croakman. Yeah. As you walk in, you slip and fall right in the entry to the doorway. Can I roll to catch him? Go ahead and make a, make a, oh, just a dex check. Youngblood always working to have to catch me. 12. 12. 
You fall, you fall. <laughs> and Tenpenny's like, okay, so I need you to bring the guest to the study. We're just gonna sit and relax and have a good time. And then lots of people, boss, I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough spaghetti for everyone now that they're all here. Who's spaghetti now? Is this a new character that we're? It's food. Oh, it's the real spaghetti. That's food. Great. You start walking further into Ooh. this beautiful hall. Wow. Oh, Ooh, look at the little freaking foyer. You walk down the hallway to a big dark wooden door with a golden knob. When Tenpenny shuffles you in, you see his gorgeous study with big windows, a giant mahogany desk, big bookshelves all over the left wall, and above the desk, a beautiful painting of a young frog girl in a suit that matches her father's, labeled Zidi. Oh. Her grin is determined and endearing. Oh, so she's a favorite. Yeah. She's shaking it. If there are oh. other children, I'm interested to see what that dynamic is, because she clearly is the favorite. Make mm -hmm. a perception check, both of you. Okay. Six. Six. My drag. How did you... <laughs> Plus two, so eight. Seven total. Seven total. You do notice, like, a significantly smaller picture on the other side of the wall, and it's like, <gasps> there's like a picture, like, if there was like a hand versus like a thumb, this is like the picture of ZD. There's like another picture, and it just says like, Alfredo. Aww. I would definitely hate it if I was being pitted against a sibling like that. Well, that we, don't, we don't know that yet. Maybe they get along. So, Tenpenny, I guess my question is, what do you do to be the frog father? That here in Frogtown. Money is power, mm -hmm. young Ribbit. Mm -hmm. I'm a very powerful man. And I uh, simply make sure order stays order. And when disorder comes, I get rid of this. You know what I mean. So are you aware that there are some like Lagunatics, do you know who the who the who they are? Are they a part of your faction or not a part of it? No, no, no. And you know what? ZD handles them. The Amphipatelias, the Lagunatics, the Poison Dark Gang. Oh, there's a lot of them. She takes care of it, but she doesn't take enough time for herself. And a her father always worries. Mm. I want to meet her. Do you think that ZD? He thinks she's like getting rid of them, but she's actually controlling them. <gasps> it's just like that one story Dorian once told me called The Inside Man. It was starring Denzel Chicago. Denzel Chicago. Thank you. With this life here, what is the village of Reston to you? Is it a getaway spot? Like you have a shop there, but you seem to be doing well here. Frogtown is where I'm from. It's like a home away from home. I don't have to be the frog father and Reston. I can just be Tenpenny Sam. Mm. It's very diverse in Reston, so maybe mm. it might be a second home to a lot of people. That's interesting. It's probably because of the quality of our schools. Mm. We big smart. Yeah. It's, that's interesting. Thank you for answering that question. I I, I never knew that. It's, it's, maybe I should have talked with the villagers a little I bit know. more. I mean, I, I appreciate the clarity. I think it's like nice to know what the f is going on now. Um, I guess my last question is like, do we get to meet ZD? I'm yeah. sure she's around somewhere. We could probably well, get you. I'd, I'd love for you two to meet my daughter. Yeah, yeah. She sounds like, uh. she sounds like a, you. So that's. Pretty dope. As you're getting ready for it, he, he talks a little bit more about why you are all here with the Lily lot and that Tenpenny Samuel has no actual intention of taking Lily Patton's land. That whole like conflict with the Lagunatics, he wasn't even sure what was going on. And that conflict is why he came back. He heard that things mm. were getting out of hand. Mm. He hadn't heard from ZD, so he wanted to come back and find out what was going on himself. Mm. Yeah, it's a, I'm sorry that there's such a turf war going on right now like in your town. I know. He would rather Lily Patton take over that land and take care of it and preserve it rather than like some heathen like Crockett. Yeah, no, Lily Patton seems way more, not just a nicer guy, but seems to have more of a level head on his shoulders mm -hmm. than Crockett. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his whole deal is, but he's got a lot to work out. Lots. The frog butler just opens the door and then rolls in this like fancy gold cart that has porcelain white bowls of steaming spaghetti and a thick scarlet sauce. Ooh. The whole room just starts to smell like tomato and garlic and butter and just goodness. Ooh. And you see Lata standing there. He had some extra pasta sauce already done, so it only took a couple of minutes. Enjoy. And he like bows and leaves the room and hands each of you pasta. <gasps> Frogderson is actually snoring at this point on Melfrog's shoulder and like Melfrog looks just tired and exhausted and Tenpenny looks over, okay kids, let's get you rested up. I often work late in here and he like looks at the bookshelf. Why don't you uh, 
pull out my edition of Frog Bedtime Stories, Sleeping with the Fishes, and then we'll uh, let you get some rest. <laughs> <gasps> Is that the book? Yeah. No, no way! way. Sleeping with the Fishes. Once upon a time. Oh my god, it's a real story? story. There was a little fish named Gimo. What in the world? Gimo wanted to be the greatest, fastest, smartest fish in the sea. But then he had to learn the rest of the alphabet. Oh. Gimo said, Father, you come to me <laughs> on the day <laughs> oh my God. of my mother's funeral, oh. of her soup that we threw out because it was terrible. And it just goes on and on and on for a while mm. to the point that it actually bores the kids into a sleep. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, did they ever find Gimo? Who knows? <laughs> He's sleeping with the fishes. Yes, I guess he so. Is. Ah! <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> young, young River gets it. At that point, Tenpenny Samuel goes to the bookshelf and then pulls down another book. The bookcase swings open <laughs> and reveals another room. And say. in this room, there's a gigantic bed and there's an oddly shaped bulge under the sheets. Oh. But it's not big enough to be a frog. <laughs> you disgusting heathen. I'm so sorry. We are five. Kids actually, uh, Go with the butler in the foyer. After some protest, the kids are sent out of the room and you three enter the room with Tenpenny. Tenpenny grabs the blanket and rips the sheet off. Ooh. I'd like you two to close your eyes for a second. Damn. Closing her eyes, closing her eyes. And underneath the sheet, you can open your eyes, is a severed horsefly head. No oh my way! God. <laughs> Girl. This is everything. <laughs> I mean, oh my god! I'm gonna beat their frogging f***ing asses. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Is this like a sign of, is this like a turf? Is this like, is so, this, so, is this about to go down? So things just got real for you, I'm assuming. I think we've been compromised. <laughs> what do you mean? I think it means that the Laguna takes it here. Tenpenny goes back into the foyer with you two in tow, heading towards the backyard after all of this has happened. Oh. And you see Lotsa, the frog butler, mm -hmm. walk up. Lotsa, we've got a cord, Gorgonzola. I think we have Laguna ticks on the premises. They left me a message in the, the extra room. And color starts to drain from Lotsa's face as all of you head to the backyard. And there is a beautiful garden of fresh veggies and pretty flowers, a massive greenhouse, and the leafy greens seem to obscure any sort of vision of what's going on inside. However, through the leaves, you can see four figures and hear noises. Make a perception check. 15. 19. Wow. So 17. 17. 21. 21. Both of you do notice a silhouette, the silhouette that looks almost like ZD. Tenpenny seems like peg it at the same time that you two do. ZD. ZD. And then just starts sprinting towards, worried that something is going on with ZD involving the Lagunatic. See, he runs to the door. He's like trying to get it oh. open, but it seems like it's been barricaded and locked. I will use my lock picking skills, but like, I also feel like maybe, could I roll for like a hatch being open on the roof or something? Like, yeah, make a perception check. Okay, 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 okay. okay. 15. Okay. okay. 17 total. Ooh. 17. It looks like there is a slightly open window hatch up top. Uh huh. You could probably climb like, almost because like, it's like a slanted rooftop. Yeah. So you might be able to get up there. It's just getting up there is going to be the hard part, but it's possible. I'm a frog. Ooh. Okay, you got those sticky hands? Go ahead and make an Athletics check with advantage if mm. you're trying to jump up. Okay. Period. Period. It's a 20. Just from working together, you two know each other very well. Croakman, you actually take a couple steps back and then leap towards young Rivet, who prepares to do that like launch up. <gasps> and Rivet yes. jumps down. And then, We've like, been practicing these while we've traveled. At that same time, you spring up to give yourself that extra lift. Oh, you yo, yo, jump yo. up and then land silently, probably following some of young Rivet's example from your previous encounter. Hey! Work, bitch. And I'm picking the lock. Do make I? I'm slide a fan check. Sixteen. Sixteen. Ooh. That's enough. Ooh. You know what you're doing. You start putting the picks inside, and it's kink, kink, kink. As it opens up, 
you from the top and you just opening up the door and just like peeking through because I'm assuming you're not just diving in. Oh no, hell no. Yeah, you never do. You see inside fairy lights all across, dozens of lily pads, beautiful plants sprouting up from what looks to be almost like large pools of water set up. And then you see on the lily pad closest to you what looks to be a tray full of spaghetti. Is this where all of the pasta went? On the lily pad farthest from you, you see them finally. Zidi stands wearing a beautifully tailored white suit and she's holding hands with Facili? <gasps> From the Lagunatics? Ooh. Yeah, that's the acid hoe. Yeah. Fusili is wearing a gorgeous black suit and between them stands another familiar figure. Pastor oh. Pasta. He's oh. cute. Oh Look at his little hat made out of flowers. You see a figure next to him on his right, Frankie Starza Pretty. A frog in a fancy tan suit and hat gently sings a romantic ballad. Oh, Frank Sinatra. Oh, um, but well. Wow. When love oh. finds a way, a frog today holds hands and goes as far as they can. When love is close, a heart won't close because you open up. I had no idea music could move you like this. It this be, is it beautiful. Does. Yeah. This is the most beautiful gang meetup that I've ever seen. Youngblood, as you opened this door, you yourself are calm and quiet, but Tenpenny is not so much so, as his massive head is just peeking through the doorway, staring at what is so confusing. And it's almost like a record scratch. Everyone inside of this room just stops and stares with wide eyes. And Zidi's a little bit shocked. Uh, that Daddy? Zidi, what? what is this? I didn't know you were in town. I was gonna tell you after I, after we. Zidi with a lagunatic? How could you lie to me? And you see Tenpenny like looking actually pretty broken up. And Zidi goes on, I told you I had an informant on the side. That wasn't a lie and I never lied. I just never told you that we were in love. And Facili chimes in and is like, it, it's true. I, Mr. Samuel, I, I want to help you. I, and above all, I really want to make Zidi happy. I, I care about her. Oh, that's nice. Oh. The air is like thick with tension and Tenpenny, like his, his face drops a little bit. You happy? And suddenly a voice comes from behind you to break up this tender moment. I just realized this doesn't add up with the horse in the bed. Oh, it does not. Oh, oh man. Oh, come on, Samuel. Have you really gotten so soft? Your Kermit impression has gotten worse, Kate. <laughs> it's cause you crushed it! <laughs> oh! I crushed the windpipe. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Ugh, frog in my throat. <clears throat> Demounting his big spiky snail shell oh. is the one, the only, Rocket the Krug. And then his goons, Orza and Manicotti, also oh burst gosh. through the glass at the back of the greenhouse and end up wrapping their arms around Zidi, oh. Vasily, oh. the pastor, and Frankie, oh. holding them all hostage. Oh my gosh. So I jump into the greenhouse. I'm a frog, I can do that. Make an acrobatics check. And that's a 16 plus three, 19. Superhero landing. Mm -hmm. Call off your goons, all right? They were having a really lovely moment here mm -hmm. with some really pretty music. You gotta let them go. I've got my sword, and I'll do what to you what I did to that horse fly. Your mm -hmm. own blood crosses you, and you're so ready to forgive? Why, when I found out Facili was a double agent, I had quite the fit. You should have seen what I did to her horse fly! <sighs> and then, Tenpenny Samuels! Oh. His, well, you saw. Damn. Hers, you'll never see again. <gasps> oh. That's it's delicious. Oh. oh. Nothing compares to what I'm gonna do to all of you. What what are you gonna do? I I, I assume that we need to we need to take action. Can I just roll to attack from behind? Technically. 
Okay. I'm okay. All right. So hey, while uh, he's doing that, I'm gonna distract him. Hey, I bet you're not man enough to to fight some real men and not just horse flies, poor defenseless horse flies, huh? Great. I'm gonna attack like in stealth. Can I do that? Yeah. Roll with advantage. Okay. Sixteen. Fourteen. So sixteen. Yep. Plus seven. Okay. So that's twenty-three with oh. my dagger. Roll damage. Oh, okay. D four. A D4. Three? Three? Sorry, eight. Yeah. So you... Oh, got him. I see. This is how it's going to be. Oh, huh. God. And Patton that... actually walks in oh. from behind all of this. Lily Patton? Lily Patton walks in from, all from behind. He walks in. Lily Patton, you sweet, dumb nerd. <laughs> How is that dying? He reaches into Dad. pocket in his flesh. Great work. I'll take it. He pulls out periwinkle mushroom. And before you can do anything to stop him, he takes a huge bite out of the glowing mushroom. Oh my gosh, he's gonna trip out. And a poof of purple smoke erupts from him, completely obscuring Crockett from you. <laughs> <laughs> Flecks of blue firefly light twinkle across the cloud of smoke that erupts from his body, which grows and grows until it nearly fills the greenhouse and then spreads out to the yard. The ground shakes as you hear a deep croaking roar, and a massive webbed foot steps forth from the cloud and slams into the ground, standing right outside of the greenhouse that you all can see. The purple smoke whisks away to show off a monstrous... Crockett. Youngblood, I think at this point I would rather take a uh, mother and her giant growing ferns than whatever this is. Roll for initiative. Oh. As you are going into combat with Crockett. 18. Oh, 10. Plus 6. So I have whatever that math is. So that is going to be Young Ribbit, Crockett, Croakman. Great. I'm gonna use Cloud of Daggers. I'm gonna attack from like the shadows with that. Where do you spawn them? Both at his eyes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what? <laughs> Why you, I mean, wow. <laughs> what do your daggers look like when they like when they appear? Are they like spinning blades? Are they Ooh, like? It's like one of those things where like it's so fast. It's just like mm, a blur, yeah. right? That's how fast they're moving. Yeah. I sang a little bit, and like these bitches are on fire. It's almost like a light show. Almost, yeah. And it's just like they're just spinning, and they're wow. like right in his eyes. Wicked. Okay, roll the d4 four times and okay. then add it up. So one, me. <laughs> four, so okay. five. Good. Oh. So six, and then roll one more time. Bitch! Seven. <laughs> but you're in luck, <laughs> because the way that this works is when a creature enters it for the first time or starts its turn there. Mm -hmm. So you just did seven damage to Crockett <laughs> on your turn, mm -hmm. but Crockett's turn will be next. And he's starting in that same spot. That's three. One. Oh, that's one, a one. Five. So three, one, one. Two. two. So, so seven. seven. Seven again? Uh huh. Crockett, although you are hidden, Crockett does see your companion, mm -hmm. Roman. Mm -hmm. He goes, <gasps> Oh no. It. Oh gosh. And shoots his tongue out in your direction. Oh. It starts to like wrap around you. Ew. I need you to make a strength saving throw. Oh, he tongue punched me. Oh, it was a 19 and then it went to a 1! Oh. It was like, oh. get, get. <laughs> I'm no. so mad! Crockett wraps his tongue around you. Oh, okay. Pulls you up to bite you. Oh, now, another luckily, freaking... You are not in range of the cloud of daggers Thank because God. I'm not oh, a monster. Great. <laughs> Crockett is. But I'm not. Uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah. And is going to make a bite attack against you as a bonus action. This has been a terrible day. Can I just say? That's a 14 to hit you. 14 hit me, and I have to do a, like a strength. It is your armor class. He's aiming to. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. 18. 18? <gasps> so he tries to bite down, but Roman, something inside of you is ready for this. You are a hero. You have fought back <laughs> against terrible challenges. Period. As Crockett tries to. And, and quite frankly, yeah. I've had enough of people biting me today. And so as Crockett's about, I've had enough of people biting me today. <laughs> and kind of just like holding Crockett's mouth just open. And at one point you then just use one hand and then one foot to kind of just like wedge your way and hold still. It is your turn, Roman. Oh man. Thunderous Smite is a bonus action. Yes, it is. Can I do that right now? You could. So what you could do is you use Thunderous Smite. 
Uh, and try this. I don't think I've ever used this before. There are the ability smites, mm -hmm. and then there are spell smites. Mm. A spell smite is one that you like basically prepare your sword to do something good or dope when you hit. The uh, class smites are reactive after you've already hit. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So like it's basically like lighting your sword on fire or like putting electricity or thunder in your sword. Yeah. And then when you hit, then it would do something. Maybe I could just try to scrape the side of the mouth. That always hurts like a okay. bitch. I swipe the side of the mouth. 13 with my short sword. That's a plus five. 18. That will hit. That will hit? Yes, it will. Okay. You, so, you added your thunderous smite, right? Yes, I did. What does it look like when you activate Ooh, your thunderous oh smite? Oh, gosh. The hilt is glowing, and forth from it are all these electrical bolts. And then I'm using that to then squirt the inside of the cheek. What color is the thunder? Blue. On. So roll the D6. D6. For your short sword. Short sword. And then roll an additional 2D6 for the thunder damage. Okay, so... D6, and it's plus three, does that? Yep. That is, so that's eight. That's eight. Eight slashing, and then this is the thunder. Four is eight, eight plus four is 12, and then two, 14. You've both done 14 damage to him. Oh, we did! In the span of You're one in. turn total. We are on the same and page. And he needs to make a strength saving throw. Oh, yes. Of your attack. Yes, he does. That is a six. So, so that is a fail. Oh, that is ah, a fail. Okay, okay great. I was like, what is happening? Uh, <laughs> so he actually gets. Oh, and, and I fall. I drop out. He's. Uh, you, but you do like a superhero landing and land pretty mm -hmm. majestically. This <gasps> massive figure is now laying down on the ground, almost like stunned a little bit. Oh man. A familiar friend walks out. You see Lily Patton walk up. Oh. Oh gosh, okay, this completely goes against everything I try to preserve in the lily lot, but I can't just let you solve my problems alone. And Patton pulls out a similar mushroom to the one that Crockett had. Oh. Throws it in his mouth, <gasps> and you see Lily Patton experience the same boom of purple smoke, and then a massive Lily Patton stands behind all of you. I guess this is happening. Oh, oh my god! Here we go! Two gigantic frogs! And it's mine? It is your turn. We're at the top of the initiative. Oh man. Also, while he's prone, you get advantage on melee strikes. I'm just gonna, I guess, try to strike at him. Yeah, he's, go for he's it. He's on the ground. Go for it. My daggers are like, are they still like suspended in the air where his eyes were? Those so are th gone. those are separate ones because that is a concentration what? and your concentration hasn't dropped yet. Got it. So I'm going to use my long sword mm -hmm. and I'm gonna like run up his body. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Right? And then I'm gonna do that thing where like, you spin something and then you grab it and then I'm gonna try to stab him in the heart. Oh my gosh! Maybe not to kill him, but to just <laughs> warn him? I don't know. I'm gonna stab you in the heart, but I'm just gonna do it to warn you. His heart's big, it won't do anything, but it'll it'll let him know I'm I mean business. Roll with advantage. Okay. okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Two. But you have advantage because he is prone. Three. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Three is better than two. A seven total. Seven total. You try to stab in, but somehow some part of his like froggy flesh, weird sentence, is too hard to properly pierce through. It gets like maybe an inch in, but it is his turn. <gasps> Roll your 4d4. Oh lord. One, one, two. That's four damage total. All right, now get it. Now get one more. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> so that's five points of We damage. need to find your other D4. He is going to stand up for half of his movement. Ooh. Am I hanging on to my... Would you like to? Yeah, I'm hanging on to my sword. Okay. <laughs> my and we're just going to put the normal crockett back there, but just imagine he's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on his chest. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like it. He's going to shoot his tongue at you. <laughs> Make a strength <gasps> saving throw for me, please. Is that 20? Yes, it is. Nine total. Nine total? Mm -hmm. That tongue wraps around you oh, yourself, no. young boy, as you're on his chest. No! And, he, and starts pulling you towards him, and he's going to make a bite attack against you. Oh, as a bonus man! Um, That's a 16 to hit. What is your AC? 16. Meets it, beats it, I'm afraid. <gasps> oh, f Oh, what? That's not okay. Am I dead? So you take eight points of piercing damage, and... I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. That didn't count. Yes, that was it four. <laughs> yes, it no! did. That was a four. What's your bonus? Oh, gosh. Seven. So that's 11. Is that like just pass or just You under? just passed. Oh, Jesus! Oh! Oh, Jesus. 
Crockett tried to pull you inside of his mouth. Oh my God. And you catch yourself just at the edge, oh holding on to his lips. He's not able to pull you all the way in, but you felt that you were on the edge of being swallowed. Uh huh. Oh man. I don't like this. Then it is your turn, Roman. Okay, great. Get me out this bitch. Get you out. Mouth. Yes, I'm going for. I'm going towards it. I used this once before. I think this was a really good thing last time I got to use this. Divine favor. Yeah. I'm gonna use that as I'm, you know, gonna attack the ankle. Maybe distract him. So. Do it. Young blood, hold on. Hold on, young blood. And attack. Twenty. Four. That hits. Yes. Go ahead and roll damage. Amazing. So roll your D6 and your D4. And At then the just add time. five. Yeah, and then add, because you're doing the D6 for the short sword. Yeah. D4 for the divine favor. Yes. And then just add your plus. The bonus. Yeah, your plus bonus at the end of that. Woo! And then D6 plus three, so uh, seven plus four is 11. Good job. You see, Cro you. you see Crockett starting to look wary at this point. Yeah. He looks nervous, he has been injured, he's like swaying a little bit. He's not fully in his element at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lily Patton, you got this? <laughs> Take us home. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry about this. And Lily Patton actually goes in to bite oh. Crockett's tongue. The soft no of of stage. <laughs> Crockett isn't prepared for Lily Patton coming forward and taking a hearty, nervous bite, rolling a nat twenty to hit Ooh. on Crockett's tongue, biting down hard in a way that even Crockett doesn't enjoy. And Crockett lets go of you. Young oh Ribbit. Mm -hmm. That brings us to the top of the round. It is Young Ribbit's turn once more. I'd like to use Vicious Mockery. Heck yeah. Of I've course. not used this in so you long. Have been, you've been waiting for that vicious mockery. So I rolled the saving throw. They got a five. So that is a failure. Okay. So then it is 1d4 plus what? 1d4, it says, it says uh, succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d4 psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn. Okay, so roll your d4 to deal the psychic damage. Okay. Lord. Oh my God. So this D4 really doesn't like you. So it's a one. It, it is a weighted D4. One point of psychic damage. What do you say for your vicious mockery? Oh my god, I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> uh oh. Where do I start? You green wannabe nasty ass perverted <laughs> uncomfortable ugly ass amphibian ass wet webbed feet looking ass Sesame Street wannabe. <laughs> Tattle looking like a tadpole <laughs> lost its parents at birth. <gasps> bitch. And I ended with, that's on period. And that's how I did, that's how I did my vicious mockery. They will have disadvantage on their next action. Mm -hmm. uh, but because Lily Patton has held Crockett still, will still be in your cloud of daggers. Lily, so, Lily Patton, who's a giant and got his, the other guy's tongue in his teeth, is like, oh. <laughs> okay, I didn't know we were gonna be speaking like that here. <laughs> so go ahead and roll your D4 one right. more times. <laughs> Another one! Finally, a four! Five. A four! Nine. A two! Eleven. Okay. Lord. <laughs> they are not looking good at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They do pull their tongue out of Lily Patton's grasp. They shoot their tongue out at you, Roman. I need you to make a strength saving throw. Okay. A strength saving throw. Yep. They, the tongue's coming back at me. Yes, it is. Oh, tongue no. is back, baby. And I got <laughs> a three. A three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't want to go back! <laughs> it wraps around you and starts pulling you in. No! But thanks to the disadvantage from Youngblood, this attack roll will be at disadvantage. Yes. Oh, okay. So, eight. And what's your AC? 18. 18? Yeah, that's gonna... Five. They try to pull you in, but you hold tight once more, and you are right at Crockett's lips. You are moving with increasing speed, and they're trying to pull you in. It is your turn, Roman. What do you do in this moment? Oh man, what do I do? Well, I I'm, I, I just you feel like bite. You can bite him. That's what I want to do. I want to bite him. I'm okay. gonna bite his tongue. Okay. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Here we go. 
And that's a six mm -hmm. plus two, eight. Roll that again, because what you didn't realize is Lily Patton actually is using the help action to give you advantage. 19! Plus 19. two, 21. 21. <sighs> you deal one point of damage. Yeah. Which is lovely, because Crockett had a total of 72 points of health. Oh. And after the Cloud of Daggers was at 71. No way! Yes. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> Poetry. <laughs> Poetry. I, I really just want to say, please just hit him. That please was just hit him. Wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. You bite Crockett's tongue, and there's <laughs> <laughs> almost like fainting as Crockett slumps over. <sighs> it tasted like frog legs. Yeah, that was really gross. But no, we got, we did it. We mm -hmm. did it. Mm -hmm. So after you've defeated Crockett, the two lackeys, Orzo and Manicotti, end up fleeing the scene immediately, seeing Crockett couldn't stand up to you handful of adventurers. You mm -hmm. never stand a chance. They wanna get their ass beat. The rest of the frog wedding party comes out, and then you all hear a hooting and hollers, cheers for what you've done. We kinda of love. We kinda of did. And I feel no remorse. So. You blinded that mother Zidi is running past you, oh. as you see Tenpenny Samuel, who was standing behind all of you, not so much acting, but prepared to act in case something went wrong for you too. Zidi runs up behind him and then just wraps her arms around him oh. in an embrace that is simply just like a kid who loves their parent. Mm. Cecily shyly comes up to their side and Tenpenny like looks her up and down. So, you will really be good to my daughter? And Facili smiles, but softly. That's all I ever wanted to do. For the record, I wanted to tell you, Zidi just didn't want to disappoint you. And Zidi's eyes start filling with tears as Tenpenny puts his hand under her chin. You could never disappoint me in pursuing whatever makes you happy. I only have one issue though. The Frog Father's daughter isn't getting married in some small celebration. When we do it, we do it big. Giant Lily Frog Pat picks you all up in their massive hands and takes you all to the town square, including the spaghetti. Everyone starts gathering in the chapel to celebrate the surprise wedding of these two fabulous frog femmes that have found love in a hopeless place. Come on, Rihanna. Oh, come on, Rihanna. <laughs> it's a beautiful event. Coming up the aisle, gracefully, Henderson, Melvin, and Timmy tossing flower petals all down the aisle and all across. They bow to Vasily and the pastor before joining you all in the front row, where you've been given front row seats to this beautiful experience. There's a dramatic yet soft thrumming of a drum that ends up filling the chapel air as Snare and Klaxon get ready to welcome the brides in style. Following the drums, Klaxon starts to harmonize their French horn, and Zidi steps into view. She holds onto Tenpenny's arm as they make a slow and steady strut up the aisle. You see Facilia trying not to cry, but tears are welling up in their eyes. This is the most beautiful thing they've ever seen. Oh. Tenpenny releases Zidi and watches her ascend the steps, and she looks back at him, and you can hear her whisper, just barely, Thank you. Do you, ZT Antonia Francesca Parmesan Samuel, take Fusilli to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. And do you, Fusilli Jones, take ZT <laughs> to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Then by the power vested in me by the state of the march, I present to you, Mrs. and Mrs. Samuel Jones! You may both kiss the bride. Fusili dips Zidi as both tongues go out and then wrap around each other. Wow. Pulling each other's mouths together almost like slingshots. That's oh painful. my gosh. Hey, some people like that. And then there's just a roaring applause at this moment. The crowd tosses uncooked pasta at them oh. as they start walking down the aisle. Hey, some cultures have very interesting customs. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. The town moves to a celebration in the square. The sun goes down and lanterns start putting out a golden light on the evening. Stars appear in the sky, almost sporadically, but then all at once, as there's just a vibrant cacophony of lights and color in the air. 
A froggy band plays a bass, a flute, and a sax. Frankie's on the vocals and they're smooth as butter. Facili lifts her bouquet. <gasps> Heads up! She winds her arm back and throws. Roman, will you roll a d8 for me? Yes! Seven. <laughs> Fusilli manages to toss the bouquet so far it flies out of the crowd's reach altogether. <laughs> and it lands on the giant frog hand <gasps> of Lily Patton. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Once he realizes what happens, he immediately starts crying. I guess I'm the belle of the ball. <laughs> But the party starts raging on. The station bard guard forms a small bard band together and the crowds folk get involved and the sound is just magnetic. Everyone's pulled to the floor and able to forget everything else but dancing and being together. Your frog legs are actually working for this. They're yeah. like hopping oh, up and yeah. down, just putting their feet around. Someone terrifyingly does like a head spin, but instead of on their head, it's on their tongue. <gasps> kind of terrifying. Oh, I love it. That's, yeah. That's yeah. kind of awesome. Yeah. yeah, this is Roman's first experience to wedding dancing, mm -hmm. a, a freaking reception. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do during the wedding reception? Do you like just hang out? I'm asking people about Alfredo. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like on the floor like, so where's the brother? <laughs> Do you know? Make a persuasion check for me. Okay, okay. Oh, oh me. Oh man. That one. Maybe I should ask? I have two. Go for it. Maybe I go ahead and yeah, ask. Yeah. Maybe I'm asking the another person. Please. Please. Was, oh, 19. <laughs> Plus, what is it, persuasion? Yeah. So 22. 22. Yes. You end up dancing with Lotsi. Oh, mm. okay, great. And. Lotsy, Lotsy starts to tell you, I mean, I don't think so much that he's a uh, bad per se. It's more that to us, family is everything. To him, money might be everything. Oh. See the twinkle of a coin catch the corner of your eye. It's a familiar coin. You see Tenpenny in the corner, just kind of sitting by himself. I walk over to him. And I follow because I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> that makes sense. You two lock eyes with Tenpenny Samuel on like the outskirts of the crowd, and he's holding three dewdrops, one for you two and one for himself. And it's just like a massive ball of water, almost with like a gelatinous outside, Ooh. very thin. Think like the orbs and spheres at the bottom of like a boba or something like that. I've but watched like Bugs Life. Massive. Like. Exactly. Or, or Tinkerbell and Tinkerbell. <laughs> yeah, and Tinkerbell. exactly. We're all a familiar. <laughs> and as you start to sip on it a little bit, it's like a honeydew flavor, almost like, like a honeysuckle as well. Ooh. It's delightful. You knock back the dew drop in one gulp, but after that like honeysuckle flavor, there's a little bit of like a heat and spice to it. Is there a little vodka? Is that vodka in there? A little rum, a little fireball. <laughs> we call it frogka here. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get one more of those in before wow, the end of the yeah. chapter. <laughs> You've done well during your time outside of Reston. Not only did you come here on the day of my daughter's surprise wedding, <laughs> But you saved us from Crockett. When your father hears about this, he'll be frankly surprised. <laughs> but also proud, just like I am with my ZD. You think? Yeah. I'm proud of you, Roman. Cheers. Thank you. I already drank mine, but cheers. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the end of chapter four. Thank you so much for watching chapter four. Boy, being a frog, do recommend 10 out of 10. As a reminder, we do have the role slaying t-shirts and postcards available at the shop. And because it's the end of the video, I can reveal to you the chapter four poster, including so many of the events of this chapter. It's one of my favorite posters that have come out so far. You can get one now and it will come to you signed by that guy, Thomas Sanders. You may have heard of him. I don't know why they don't ask me to sign these posters. Maybe they should get on that. Until next time, adventurers, ta-ta! What an amazing, emotional, and adventurous end with so much blinding and physical violence. Thank you all so much for joining us. I hope that you'll join us for chapter five coming up very soon. If you're interested in any of our previous videos, click over here, or if you're new to the channel and would like to subscribe, click down there. Thanks for joining Role Slaying with Roman, and until next time, take it easy, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Peace out!